About a month ago quite a few of my viewers have asked me to look at what was happening in a nondescript temple in Cambodia where monkeys were seemingly caught over a period of time by officials from the forestry department. Their operation were caught on videos by the many monkey channels stationed at that temple, not least by the team led by the owner of Animal Post. I was rather too busy then so I did watch a video or two and left my opinion in the comment section only. Now I have a bit of free time on my hands, I think I will review what actually had happened there and why. First thing first, many viewers seems to have mistaken that place to be another temple in the grounds of the world famous Angkor ruins. Far from it, according to the channel Monkey Yoya, that temple actually locates a long long way from Angkor, at a place called Phnom Bros in Kampong Kam province. And so there's Phnom Bros according to Google Map, and we really have to zoom out to get Seam Reap in range. Yes, that's Seam Reap where the world-famous Angkor temples are located. The distance between the two places is about 250 kilometers, or about 160 miles. They are two provinces apart. Let's visit the place using the street view function of Google Map. And it is a temple of no significant archaeological value, as most of it is newly built. Very few tourists make their way there, and in fact it only gains a passing mention of a single paragraph, versus a whole 60-page devotion on the subject of Angkor Ruins and Seam Reap in the 2008 edition of Lonely Planet Guidebook that I used when I was backpacking in Cambodia in 2013. Does the courtyard below look familiar? Indeed that shaded area below with the eatery is the place where a string of mysterious deaths and injuries concerning macaques have occurred, mishaps that have happened shortly one after another, filled with many coincidences, and defied logic and nature too. I am not going to go over it as it has been dealt with before in my previous investigative videos. Truly wild long-tailed macaques are protected. And their last stronghold is the vast swathe of forest bordering Thailand, in Cardamon Mountains in southwest Cambodia. That's where they should be, alongside with others, like the northern pig-tailed. There are also smaller isolated pockets of them elsewhere in northern and eastern Cambodia. As you could see, both Phnom Bros and Angkor are really a long way from the last few remaining undisturbed swathes of forest in the country. Phnom Bros Pagoda is located in Kampong Kam province as noted previously and Kampong Kam province is made up largely of farmlands and rice paddies. Indeed, 80% of the population in Kampong Kam are farmers. Most of the land there has been developed for agricultural use and in the case of Phnom Bros, it is quite evident that there are no forests of any considerable size nearby. In fact, the small hill on which the pagoda stands is the only place with some trees. Let's use Google Street View to do a ground tour of the hill. We are now at the foot of the hill. Not really a hill, more like a mound. And this collection of mostly young trees, about several hundred in numbers at most, planted in an area less than 600 feet across at its widest is not what we understand by the term of a forest, and it could not have been the birthplace of many wild monkeys, and definitely not the native home of two species, numbering quite a few dozens each as we have seen in the many videos put up by those monkey channels stationed in Phnom Bro's temple. Here's the view from the other side. There is no forest. Normally the two species don't mix in the wild, 
except when human brought them together, as in the case we have seen many times in Angkor where these macaques are discarded without a care. A nearby forest is most convenient, as is the forest of Angkor for those owners living in the area and, for these abandoned pet monkeys and their descendants, they are the lucky ones as there is still a proper forest of considerable size for them to try to adapt to a life in the wild once again. What's more the forest of Angkor is safe for them as all big predators are nearly extinct there. This is also the reason why the forest of Angkor is chosen by WLA to release the much endangered gibbons there. Left to their own devices, these once pet monkeys, pig-tailed and long-tailed will thrive, just like their counterparts elsewhere as they are highly adaptable. They simply thrive living alongside humans as food is easy to come by in the form of scraps, scavenged from dumping sites and garbage bins. Malaysia culled on average 70,000 of these semi-urbanized long-tailed macaques every year between 2013 and 2016. There is no shortage of supply of these long-tailed macaques which have adapted to live alongside humans in Southeast Asia. For many others, anywhere nearby with a few trees will do for their owners. Like this owner who's just releasing his pet monkey in what seems like a small park, probably near where he lives. And for those owners of pet monkeys living in Kampong Kam province, Phnom Bros Pagoda is likely to be one of a few convenient choices for them. They can't just release them in their neighbor's farmland and let them ruin their crops and livelihood there, can they? After all, they are considered pests in Cambodia and many other Southeast Asia countries and are culled in their thousands in countries like Singapore, Malaysia and Indonesia. More, a temple with many eateries is considered a place where food is easier to come by for these monkeys. So they don't feel so bad for their pets which they don't want anymore. Phnom Bros Pagoda has one in the courtyard, and many more on the road leading to the main entrance. Angkor Wat has hundreds lining along the road. Scraps are easy to come by for these monkeys. Besides, the tropical forest is rich in natural food for them. But given a choice, they would still prefer the tastier food from humans. Just a quick search will turn up a dozen of these pet monkeys getting the boot in the grounds of Angkor alone in the last year, and three in Phnom Bro's temple in a month. It is highly likely that more have been released that we'll never know. As long as people take them as pets, they will be dumped once they become unmanageable. Each of these pet monkeys was taken from the wild or born in captivity and were bought for next to nothing. And they are dumped like rubbish once they are no longer wanted. The only NGO for wild animals in Seam Reap, the German-run Angkor Center for Conversation of Biodiversity, or ACCB, has already housed 21 such monkeys and the organization just does not have the space and facilities to accept any more. But eventually, they will all adapt and thrive as most long-tailed and pig-tailed macaques will do well near humans, as food in the form of scraps is plentiful. They will breed, interbreed and reproduce as soon as a baby is weaned. Left unchecked with provision of food, they will double their population every four years, or less as we have seen how a long-tailed macaque female named Duchess was a mother not long after she had just turned two years old. She has been fed daily by the cameraman there since she was born. Everything is expedited with food. 
and these macaques and their descendants have no innate fear of humans, and some will become aggressive for food too. It is very rare for a one-year-old to be so aggressive. Anyway, in Angkor, these ex-pets and their descendants, lumped together by the many channel owners there as the non-forest troops aren't seen as much as a problem as the place is vast and they don't come often into conflict with the many tourists who simply bypass them on their tour bus on the way to the ruins. For example, the two here are just relaxing on the embankment. They are a good 400 meters from the main entrance to Angkor Wat and a whopping 4 kilometers from the ruins of Angkor Tom. Most tourists don't even know these monkeys are here. They are indeed mostly seen from a distance. In contrast, here's the temple of Phnom Bros. It is just one small temple, measures 50 meters wide and 150 meters long only. And if we consider only the courtyard where the eatery is located, it is really no bigger than a schoolyard. That's an awful lot of monkeys in such a small area. Imagine how much trouble they would cause to anyone walking across the courtyard to visit the temple there. The reviews by a few visitors to Phnom Bros Pagoda are not overwhelmingly positive of their experience with the monkeys there. And what's more, in order to produce content for their videos, these monkeys have been exasperated and many times set up by the many cameramen stationed there to no end. I wouldn't be surprised that these monkeys have become more aggressive towards humans as a result of the cameraman's intrusive and aggravating presence there every single day for the last two years. So many mishaps, so many injuries, so many unexplained deaths. In fact the channels run by Animal Post and his production team there in Phnom Bros Pagoda are like a chronicle of monkey mishaps. There's practically a baby or an adult getting hurt or into trouble every few days. 5,000 such videos in less than two years for just one channel there, and there are at least a couple dozen of them in Phnom Bros churning out similar videos in the thousands. Here's the courtyard, not huge isn't it? Imagine the odds of them happening naturally in such a small place and over such a short time. Imagine the harassment those monkeys have to put up with every day. Suffice to say, the production team there will do anything for views. And they are unashamed about their business.
there's no way those Phnom Bros monkeys would not be negatively affected by those cameramen there who follow and set these poor monkeys up on a daily basis to create content for their videos. The horror show began with the mishaps of babies Amy and Kaya in November 2018 and will continue for as long as YouTube turns a blind eye to these channels. Overbreeding, overpopulation and the final straw of becoming more aggressive towards humans are not going to bode well for these now semi-wild monkeys, most of them were pets once. Enough complaints and their removal by the authority was the result. These poor abandoned long-tailed, pig-tailed and their hybrid descendants were screwed by humans the day they were born. And there's still no escape when they thought they finally had some sort of semblance to a life like a free monkey should have in the wild. Are these monkeys to be blamed for what happened to them? But it is pretty clear that no one really cares about these semi-wild monkeys, they are not worth a dime in Cambodia. Janet, don't worry, I bring you. Why on earth would anyone want to catch a long-tailed, which is much less desirable, and one not even a baby anymore? The whole thing just didn't make any sense. One could get one for free, practically if it's not a baby. And a baby is dirt cheap there, why bother? See, how easy it is to catch one. They were all laughing and jeering in the background, at their own antics. Last but not least, I would like to compare the operation to catch these abandoned pets and their descendants at Phnom Bros Pagoda, with the one that allegedly had happened overnight at Angkor at the end of September last year, that we had no video documentation of, despite the presence of at least a dozen of cameramen who follows these monkeys and turns out hundreds of videos there every single day, for most time of the day, and we were just told almost overnight that it had happened. And the result was over a dozen baby orphans as their mothers were selectively taken by the heartless authority in a clandestine operation, as claimed by those cameramen led by Sochin and Song that brought us the well-choreographed rescue of Yearling Janet and the so-called Monkey Rescue NGO which was set up illegally and was shut down by the authority there. First of all, these operations are entirely legitimate, as their purpose is to remove troublesome and aggressive monkeys as well as to control an overbreeding colony in a locality. The forestry administration did it openly in broad daylight in front of every villagers there in Phnom Bros. As was a subsequent video shown by those cameramen based at Angkor. There is nothing to hide and everyone could watch. A throng of tourists just streamed past them in fact. Secondly, in both places they use the same method to catch monkeys, which is non-specific and inefficient as time goes by, as monkeys learn to avoid getting caught by the mechanism. It is so inefficient that the forestry administration had to come back three times to Phnom Bros over a period of nearly three weeks to finish their job. And Phnom Bros Pagoda is only one small temple on a small mound surrounded not even by a forest, just at most a circular strip of about a hundred young trees. The forest of Angkor is gigantic in comparison. Just the forest adjacent to the main temple is 400 times bigger than the grounds of Phnom Bros. Strange, almost overnight that all those mothers just disappeared, isn't it? Even stranger is the fact that almost only the mothers were taken, leaving only the babies. Look, infants, juveniles, young adults are all taken. And there's even a mother with a young baby clinging to her. The trap doesn't discriminate. Uh. 
cô cá nè không phải lợi cô cá già non tăng thì mang theo từ no official is going to risk himself by putting his hand inside a cage to separate a baby from a mother it's insane unless he wanted to lose a few fingers and for what purpose does separating them would do The whole lot would be taken as the purpose is to reduce the population in a particular locality. And even more amazing was that the cameraman knew which one had become an orphan almost the following day, even though they didn't get to see the operation, wouldn't those who had escaped naturally go into hiding with the rest of the troop? Wouldn't it take some time before one could know for certain that a mother had been captured? For the cameraman in Phnom Bros, it had taken them quite a few days before they could tell their viewers which one hadn't been taken, even though they were there documenting the entire operations. Nothing really makes sense with their story of a clandestine cull that only took the mothers and that it happened almost overnight with such efficiency and precision. What are the odds? Why seemingly impossible things keep on happening when these cameramen are around with monkeys? A baby orphan grabs the most headlines which translates into views. A dozen of them would make so many channels happy. We all know not long afterwards they even had come up with a so-called NGO to take care of orphans and injured monkeys and Sochin was asking viewers for donation to help his pet project to get off the ground too. Who would benefit the most from a sudden flux of baby orphans? And isn't it a huge coincidence that almost every single baby or mother they have followed so far would somehow got injured mysteriously, some even died too. And they have so far refused to take any of them to a proper vet like Dr. Trish Johansson for treatment, whose practice is just a few minutes away on their motorbike in town. I repeat, her practice is right in Seam Reap, and it has most modern facilities to care for animals. She even has experience with treating primates too. Anyway, the so-called NGO was shut down by the authority shortly after Christmas 2019. But not before approximately 27,000 US dollars had been raised for him by one of his supporters in the US. We simply do not know to whom this money has ended up with. Sochin seems to have deleted all the incriminating videos of his involvement in the NGO and the many so-called baby monkey rescue missions, including that of Janet. The saga has indeed ended with Laurie on his channel so it seems. Everything that happened between the end of 2018 to the beginning of 2020 have all disappeared. He has teamed up with the same person who had raised the money for him to keep the fake NGO alive, and he is bold enough to still ask for donation. And he has moved to Tai Mu Yang, Phang Na in Thailand, a seaside resort in neighboring Thailand to run his business. When monkey drama translates into views and ad money. And good money too on YouTube. And in a third world country where there is a surplus of semi-urbanized monkeys, unwanted, and uncared for, exploitation of these easily accessible and expendable monkeys is the most natural outcome. As long as there is a market for monkey drama, videos like the ones we have seen will come back in one form or another. Lastly, do we know what happened to those captured monkeys by the Forestry Administration? According to Phnom Penh post on that regular capture relocation exercise in Angkor last September, all the monkeys were released into a forest in Persat province in a place called Krakor. Here the forest on Google map where the monkeys are released into. I believe those monkeys captured in Phnom Brothers have fared the same fate. After all, had their purpose been to eliminate them once and for all, poisoned bait would have taken care of them in one go, using something like 1080. Their corpses could be picked up later. They wouldn't have needed to come back three times. Here's the street view of that forest. Honestly, it's not really ideal, it's like dumping them into someone's backyard. That's the mentality of NIMBY, no one wants these monkeys near them, but a poorer province can't protest.